match the function with the graph. Here we have a parabola. Why is it parabola? Because here we have y is equal to minus x to the power of 2 minus 4x minus 3. Every time either x or y is a square only, we're looking at the parabola. Since this is x is a square, f of x is y, only x is a square, this is a parabola opens on y-axis. If I had the other way around, if I had a y is equal to x squared, that would be the open uh, parabola that opens on the x-axis. So in this case, I know this is a parabola, and the coefficient of x squared would tell me whether the parabola opens upward or downward. If this a is positive, I conclude from that that my parabola opens upward, if the a is negative, then I conclude that my parabola opens downward. So right away, uh, I can see that this parabola opens downward, and I know then so C and D cannot be a right uh, choice here. So uh, to see which one of these A or B is a correct answer, I can find the y-intercept. Looks like the y-intercept is the same for both of them, so that's not going to really help me, but I'm going to show you how to find that's negative 3. So you can see that the y-intercept must be equal to negative 3. So both of these shows that the y-intercept is negative 3. The parabola intercept the y-axis as at the point negative 3. Now the vertex or highest point of the graph would tell me which one of these is correct. Now, since this is not given to me in terms of the general equation of the parabola, which is look like y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, if I have the equation in this form, then the vertex would be equal to h and k. However, it's not given to me in that form. We can make this look like that if I complete the square, but the easy check would be to use a formula. V of x is equal to minus b over 2a. Make sure everybody remember this formula. This would allow you to find the x position up to your vertex. In this case, your b is minus 4. Your b is equal to minus 4. That's the coefficient of x. So v of x, x position of the vertex is equal to minus minus 4 minus b over 2 times a. Your a is minus 1. The x position of the vertex, v of x, then, it's 4 over negative 2, which is equal to negative 2. So if x equal to negative 2, you want to find what is, what would be the y. That would be then y position of the vertex. So if x is equal to negative 2, I can solve for y. You plug it back into this equation. Minus minus 2 squared minus 4 times minus 2 minus 3. Okay, so that would be equal to minus, minus 2 squared would be equal to 4 plus 4. Minus 4 times minus 2 would be equal to plus 8 minus 3. So this would be minus 4 minus 3 would be minus 7 plus 8. So that would be equal to 1. So the vertex then, V of X would be equal to negative 2, and for Y would be equal to 1. As you can see, 2 and 1 is the vertex here. So that would tell me that this is my vertex, then B should be the correct graph for this equation. Okay, this is a word problem. Let's see if somebody wants to read this for us, please. Yes, uh, number 26, the number of mosquitoes, M parentheses X parentheses in millions in a certain area depends on the June rainfall X in inches according to the formula MX equals 20X minus X squared. What rainfall produces the maximum number of mosquitoes? Very good, thank you. Okay, so for this problem, we are having this formula here. So let's write the formula down. m of x is equal to 20x minus x squared. Okay, I can rewrite this as m of x equal to 
minus x squared plus 20x to make it look like a second order equation. So if I were going to graph this, this would be a graph of parabola. This would be y is equal to minus x squared plus 20x. This would be the graph of a parabola. And every time you want to find the maximum or minimum for the parabola, we need to find the vertex. The vertex would be a maximum or minimum point of the parabola. So in this case, I would write the formula for the vertex. Since this is not given to me in terms of the general equation of the parabola, I can write V of X is equal to minus B over 2A. So for those of you watching this later at home, now is a good time to see if you can find the X position of the vertex and compare the answer with us. So in this case, V of X then would be equal to minus, what is B? In this case, it looks like my A is equal to minus one. That's the coefficient of X squared. My B is equal to 20. That's the coefficient of X. So that would be minus 20, okay? So it would be minus B, minus 20, divided by 2A. My A is minus one. So that looks like it's minus 20 over minus two, which is equal to V of X is equal to 10. Okay, V of X, remember, is the X position of the vertex. If I wanna know what Y position of the vertex is, that is really is your M of X. They're not asking for M of X. If I wanted to find M of X, I would substitute for each X 10 in this equation, but they're not asking for that. That would be 200 minus 100, that would be 100. So you have to be careful what they're asking here now. V of X, X correspond to the rainfall. And they're asking you to find what's the maximum number uh, of the mosquito would appear when we have what rainfall produced. So that's what they're looking for. They're looking for X, not V, of, not M of X. So we find that uh, the maximum would occur when uh, X would be equal to 10. So when you have 10 inches of rain, then we get the maximum number of mosquito. If they ask for a ma maximum of mosquito, then that would be 100 then, if they were, if we were asking for that. But they're asking for X here. Find the inverse of the one-to-one -one function. In order to have a one inverse, the function has to be one-to-one. -one. So we have f of x, or we can call it y, is equal to 6x plus 5. To find the inverse function, we have to follow two steps. Step number one is to exchange the position of x and y. Step number two is to solve for y. So everywhere I see y, I'm going to substitute x. Everywhere I see x, I'm going to substitute y and then solve for y. To solve for y, I'm going to subtract 5 from both of the equation and then divide both sides by coefficient of y, which is 6. That would be my inverse. y is equal to x minus 5 over 6. So then I can call this inverse by using this symbol right on top of y. So inverse of f of x then would be x minus 5 over 6. And it looks like that x minus 5 over 6, b would be the correct choice here for us. Okay, you can find the graph of g of x equal to 2 to the power of x minus 4. So this is like you have y is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 4. If I can graph y is equal to 2 to the power of x, then I can shift this graph four units down. So this number here would shift my graph four units down. If this were plus four, then it would shift this graph four units up. So this number here would shift the graph up or down. So let's see how we would find the graph of y is equal to two to the power of x. We just need some points here. So if I let x be equal to zero, if x equal to zero, y would be equal to two to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is equal to one. 
So my graph gonna pass us through point zero one, and if I let x be equal to one, then y would be equal to two to the power of one, which is equal to just two. So if I take these informations here and, and graph them, that would be the graph of y is equal to two to the power of x and graph them. If x equal to zero, y would be equal to one. So my graph is gonna pass us through point uh, one here, right here, passes through this point. If x equal to one, y is equal to two. So as you can see, this graph gonna exponentially go up like that. And I, as I make the x less, if I make, x be equal to minus one, then y would be equal to two to the power of minus one, which is equal to one over two, one half. See this, this gets smaller and smaller as you go to the left. So th this graph gonna approach a zero this way. So this is a graph of y is equal to two to the power of x. Now if I wanna graph y is equal to two to the power of x minus four, means you take this graph, y is equal to two bar of x, which is this graph here, and shift that down four units. You go one, from here go one, two, three, four. So we shift it down here. So we copy that graph just like that, right there. So that would be the graph of y is equal to two to the power of x minus four. This was y is equal to two to the power of x. This shifting method works for any graph. If you had a parabola and then you add it or subtract the number outside that, then you would shift the parabola up or down depending if you're adding or subtracting the number there. So for this problem here, we are looking at the graph that originally was sitting right there and then we shift that four units. This is one, two, three, four units down. So it looks like A is the correct graph here for us. How long would it take $8,000 to grow to $24,000 at 9% compounded continuously? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a year. So for this, we need to know the formula. The formula is A is equal to P times E to the power of RT where A is the amount after two years, P is the principal, and R is the rate, and T is the time in year. So in this case, we're gonna write down the formula. A is equal to P times E to the power of RT. The amount is $24,000. P is 8,000. E to the power of rate is 9%. So 9% would be 9 divided by 100 would be 0 0.09. Time is what you're looking for. So I can divide both sides here by 8,000. You can reduce, it would be three equal to e to the power of 0 0.09t because the variable you're solving for happened to be at the exponents. We take a natural log of both sides. Natural log of three is equal to natural log of e to the power of 0 0.09t. Now, if you remember the properties that we learned before, natural log of e to the power of x would be equal to x because the base is also e here. We have another property similar to that for log. Now we're talking about it, let's better try it down here. Log of b to the power of x, if the base is the same as the base of this exponent, is also would be equal to x. So you may want to write these two down and remember these two properties. So here, because of the basis e, so this whole thing to the right hand side would be simply 0 0.09t. So in the left hand side, I get natural log of three. The right hand side, I just simply get 0 0.09t. So I can solve for t here. So to solve for t, you just divide both sides by the coefficient of t. So we get natural log of three over 0 0.09. Now you need to use your calculator here to see what would be the answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter natural log of three on my calculator. Okay, so we're gonna enter these numbers 
in our calculator, a natural, uh, log, natural log of three. So you can put, uh, depending what calculator you have, but here I have to put uh, LN first and then hit three. Now natural log of three is equal to 1.098. If I divide uh, that, divide 0 0.09 into this, then I get my answer. Uh, but you could, you could just go ahead and write natural log of three divided by 0 0.09. You can do that too also, depending again what calculator you have. If you click on enter, it give you 12.206. Here it says to round your answer to the nearest tenth. So the answer would be, this is my tenth, okay? So that would be 12.2 because this number is a uh, zero. So that would be 12.2, 12.2 years. And it looks like that the closest answer to us right here is 12.2 years. That's how you find your answer. Solve this equation. Uh, we have a log logarithmic equation here. So the first step is to look at log of x plus log of x minus 15, this is base four for both of these. We need to combine these into a single logarithm. So if you recall, if I have log of x plus log of y, I can combine those. I have log of x plus log of y. I can write this as log of x times y with the same base b. So here I would write this as log of x times x minus 15. Log of x times x minus 15 is equal to 2. The next step is to write this as its exponential function. Let's write down the formula again. The formula says that if I have log of x is equal to y with the base b. I can write this as b to the power of y is equal to x. x is your argument, b is your base. So in this case, your base is four. So you write this as four to the power of two is equal to my argument, which is x times x minus 15. So right now I don't have any, x, any log, I can f solve this equation. That would be 16 is equal to, I need to distribute this would be x squared minus 15x. So if I move everything to one side of the equation, it would be x squared minus 15x minus 16 is equal to zero. To solve for this, I need to factor this or you can use a quadratic formula if it's not factorable. I'm gonna use x and x. Looking for two numbers, when you multiply them together, you get 16, and when you add them up, you get minus 15. So it looks like that would be one and 16. One times 16, give me 16. In order to make negative 15 out of this, then I have to make this minus 16 plus one. When I multiply the two closest terms, I get one x, Multiply two further, so we get minus 16x, that adds up to minus 15x. So x plus one equal to zero, that means x equal to negative one, and x minus 16 equal to zero, so it means x equal to 16. We are not gonna accept the negative answer, so only the 16 would be your, your solution, x equal to 16. So we're not gonna accept x equal to minus one. So the correct answer should be here, a. Solve the exponential equation by taking the logarithm on both sides, express the solution set in terms of logarithm. All right, so here we have e to the power of x plus 8 equal to 5. So if I take a natural log of both sides, then if you recall, we had the property if I have natural log of e to the power of x, because the base is e, this whole thing would be equal to x. So here, the left hand side would be simply x plus eight equal to natural log of five. To solve for x, you can subtract eight from both sides of the equation, and it looks like x would be equal to natural log of five minus eight, and a should be a correct answer here. Here we're gonna find the center and radius of a circle. When you have both x and y are squared, then you could have either circle, ellipse or hyperbola. 
in this case they are telling us this is a circle but I need to write it in the general equation of the circle which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Our equation doesn't look like this but I can make it look like that by completing square. So I'm going to go ahead and gather all the x together get x squared minus 2x and I need to ask myself what do I need to add to these two terms to make it look like x minus h squared. I have to complete the square. We want to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1 1 first, the coefficient of x is 2, minus 1 squared, which is equal to just 1. In other words, I need to add 1 inside this parentheses to complete the square. At the same time, I need to subtract 1 so I don't change the original equation. I still have x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1 is going to add up to 0, but now I can factor these three terms, and that would be not only would be factorable, also would be same binomial. So that would be minus 1, minus 1. So in other words, we get x minus 1 squared. So we made this part of the formula. If you do the same thing for y, here I'm going to gather all the y's. It y squared plus 18y. Now you notice that the coefficient of y squared is 1, so I can start the steps take the coefficient of y, which is 18, divided by 2, and you square it. You always do that. So we have 18 divided by 2, and you square it. 9 squared, 81. Square it, give you 81. So it means we need to add 81 and subtract 81 inside this parentheses to complete the square. And this whole thing would be equal to minus 66. This 66 is part of the radius. I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. All right, so as you can see, this would be also factorable. It would be y plus 9 times y plus 9. Except I don't need this minus 81. I don't need this minus 1. I need to move it to the other side of the equation. So I complete the square here using this method, writing this as x minus 1 squared. You notice that that will look like my general equation of the circle now, plus y plus 9 squared equal to, now I'm going to move negative 1 and negative 81 to the other side of the equation, so that would become plus 1 plus 81. So on the right-hand side, I get negative 66 plus 1, that give me one would be my radius. So here we have x minus 1 squared plus y plus 9 squared equal to, when I add everything to the right hand side, give me 16. So my radius r squared is equal to 16. So r would be equal to square root of 16, which is equal to 4. So we know we are not going to accept B or D because the radius is says is 16. That's not right. Now the center would be X minus H. So my H is 1 and my K, Y minus K. This would be Y minus minus 9 would be minus 9. So this is a center. The center would be 1 and minus 9 and the Radius is 4, looks like A is the correct answer here. Here we're going to solve the system by substitution method. As you can see, this is not a linear equation. It's a nonlinear equation. The, if I would graph the first equation here, that would be a graph of a circle. And if I graph the second line, I would get the graph of straight line. You don't have to graph this, but you can see you have a circle and you have a straight line. You could have up till two points of intersection. If you have a circle and a line going through it, they get two points of intersection. So you could get up to two points of solutions here. They're asking us to use a substitution method. So let's go ahead and use a substitution method. I'm going to take the second equation and solve x in terms of y or y in terms of x. Does it make a difference? So in this case, I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 7 from both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to substitute that into the first equation of x squared plus 
y squared is equal to 25. So everywhere I see x, I'm going to put 7 minus y squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So the only unknown now I have is y. When I expand this, recall if I have a minus b squared, that is the same as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So I need to expand this that same way. So it would be 7 square 49 minus 2ab, 2 times 7, 14y, plus y squared. Then we have plus y squared here equal to 25. So this is what you solve for here. So you get 2y squared here. So I have 2 y squared minus 14 y plus 49. I'm going to move the 25 to the left. That becomes minus 25 equal to zero. So now I can uh, solve this. I get uh, 2 y squared minus 14 y. Here I got 49 minus 25. They give me 20, my, plus 24 equal to zero. Now, I can factor the 2, so make this uh, coefficient a little smaller. If I factor a 2, get y squared minus 7y plus, give me 12 equal to 0. So that I can divide both sides by 2, eliminate that 2 altogether. So now I have y squared minus 7y plus 12 equal to 0. So if this is not factorable, I can use quadratic formula, but it looks like this is factorable. I get y here, y here, and here I get 3 and 4. Both has to be minus. That adds up to 7. So y minus 3 equal to 0, so y is equal to 3. Or y minus 4 is equal to 0, and y is equal to 4. So I got two answers as i expected i have a circle and i have a line going across it so now i can solve for x here okay so so far we find x is equal to three x equal to three or x equal to four from the previous part so when x is equal to three remember we can pick the second equation or any of those two equations really to solve for for y so when, when x is equal to 3, we can solve for y. 3 plus y is equal to 7. So y would equal to 7 minus 3. So that would be y is equal to 4. That's one, one solution. x equal to 3, y is equal to 4. The second solution would be when x equal to 4, what is y? We have 4 plus y is equal to 7. So y is equal to 7 minus 4, that would be y, y is equal to 3. So my other solution would be 4 and 3. So 3 and 4, and 4 and 3 looks like C is the correct answer here. Now, if you, if you graph this, that would be a line, x plus y is equal to 7, and x squared plus y squared equal to 25 would be a circle and graph these two and see where they intercept. Again, it didn't ask us to solve it graphically, but I can show you how to confirm our results. So if, as you can see, if I graph this circle, x squared plus y squared equal to 25 means this is, the center would be zero and going through a point a plus and minus five because the radius is square root of 25, which is 5. And the line x plus y equal to 7, which shows that if x is equal to 0, y would be equal to 7. If y is equal to 0, x equal to 7. As you can see, my graph is going to pass us through this point 7 and 7. And you can see the point of intersection is as we calculated would be the point 4, 3. That would be 4, 3 right here. 
and also that would be three and four which is right here so this would be how you see the solution graphically and when you have a system of uh, nonlinear equation take a look at each equation and see what it does look like this is a circle and this is a straight line so in this case because of the line going through the circle we get two point of intersection but we could get no solution or one solution even depending how this line is going to intercept the circle here we want to expand the binomial there's a pattern that we can follow if you recall if i have x plus y squared to expand this we square the first term and we said plus two times x times y plus y squared and we said if this is minus then this would be minus now if i were going to find what this x plus y cubed is we can use the pattern here we took the first term and we squared them here we do the same thing we take the first term and we we cube them and as you can see for the first example the exponents keep decreasing you start from x to the power of two this would be x to the power of one and then the last term would be x to the power of zero that's why we don't see it here because x to the power of zero is equal to one so here the next step should be x to the power of two and the next one would be x to the power of one and the next one would be x to the power of zero which is one i don't write it down now if you look at the first one y it started from y to the power of zero and then y to the power of one and y to the power of two same thing here y to the power of zero that would be y to the power of one and then that would be y to the power of two and the last term would be y to the power of three so this is how you retrieve the variables to retrieve the coefficient there is a pattern there too so you take the coefficient of x square which is one you multiply that by this exponent one times two and you divide it by number of terms you have here you only have one term two times one is two two divided by one would be two that's how we got this two here and if you continue with that if i have two times one two times one is two divided by two here we have two terms that's how we get this one here so let's follow that pattern here to recover the coefficients here one times three is three three divided by one would be three so the next coefficient should be three then i can multiply two times three it's equal to six six divided by you have two terms here six divided by two three again and then you get three times one is three divided by a number of terms three equal to one so you want to make sure that always the first and last coefficient should be equal to one so if this is plus that would be plus that would be plus that would be plus now if this is minus you just you alter the sign between plus and minus it would be plus minus plus okay so that would be uh if if this were the uh um plus minus plus minus okay so we got it now let's do this for four one more uh, just to learn the pattern here so if i have x plus y to the power of four the first term would be x to the power of four i know that the last term should be y to the power of four so i know that too so the last term should be y to the power of four i'm going to write it right here okay so the next one would be x to the power of three you keep decreasing the exponents the next one would be x to the power of two and then next one would be x to the power of one and the last one would be x to the power of zero which i don't have anything here that's why i don't put it there now uh, for y would be y to the power of zero y to the power of one y to the power of two y to the power of three 
and then we have y to the power of 4 as you can see here. Now the coefficient, 1 to the power of 4 would be equal to 4, 4 divided by 1 would be uh, uh, just uh, 4. So for the coefficient, we have 1 times 4 is 4. 4 divided by 1 would be 4, so this should be 4. 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 2. That would be 6, so the next coefficient would be 6. I hope everyone can see this, this pattern here. Next one would be 6 times 2 divided by 3, because we have three terms here would be 12 divided by 3, that would be 4, the next coefficient would be 4, and then you go 1 times 4 is 4, divided by 4 is equal to 1, and as we expected, we got 1 here. And then, again, the sign would be plus here, and then if if this were minus, you alter the sign, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So, let's fix that one. Okay, so now as you can see, we, they're saying that what is y my x minus y to the power of five. So for that one, we, let's uh, follow the same pattern there. X, uh, let's do plus first, x plus y to the power of five. I know my first term would be x to the power of five. My last term would be y to the power of five. So the next one, you keep decreasing the exponents of x. So it would be x to the power of 4, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 1, and then x to the power of 0, which is the last one. And then you start with y to the power of 0, y to the power of 1, y to the power of 2. You, you increase the exponents for y. y to the power of 3, y to the power of 4, and then y to the power of 5. Now we're going to look at the coefficient. 1 times 5 is 5 divided by 1 is 5, so this should be 5. 4 times 5 is 20, 20 divided by 2 is 10, so this would be plus 10. 10 times 3 is 30 divided by 3 is 10, so it would be plus 10 for the next one. 10 times 2 is 20 divided by 4. So it would be 20 divided by 4, which is equal to 5. So it would be plus 5. 1 times 5 is 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So as you expected, the last coefficient should be 1. Again, if this were minus, you change the sign plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And as you can see, if you follow this pattern, you can find x plus y uh, or x minus y to the power of anything, any exponents. Now, uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is if these were like instead of x on the test you might see instead of x you would say 2x or if so y you have uh, y squared it could be anything this x and y could be any any terms what you want to keep in mind is you start with x x and y first and build this up and then change x to whatever that is if the x was 2x you change each x to 2x here and evaluate. If y was 2y, you just uh, replace y with 2y. So you, this is what you want to write down first and then work accordingly. So it looks like uh, in this example, I get x to the power of 5. And you can look at when you have uh, the pattern or not. So it's x to the power of 5, x to the power of 4, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 1, and x to the power of 2. So it looks like the pattern works uh, nicely here on A. For uh, for this next one, x to the power of 5, well, definitely we, we see the sign is not right because the first sign should be positive. So it cannot be C. And here we have x to the power of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that looks that patterns is good here also, except this, the, the sign should be plus, also between plus and minus. So it looks like D is the correct one, plus, minus, and the coefficient is exactly what we found. So D, in this case, is the uh, correct choice here for us. Okay, 
So for this problem, we want to graph y is equal to log of x plus 2 with the base 4. So let's write, write this down here. We have y is equal to log of um, x plus 2 with the base 4. So we want to graph y is equal to log of x plus 2 to the base 4. Now, if I can uh, graph y of log of, let me check that. So, if I have y is equal to log of x with the base 4, now this plus two means you're shifting this graph two units to the left. So you can make it simpler to graph y is equal to log of x first, and then log of x plus two would be shifting this graph here to the, to the left two units, okay? So in order to graph y is equal to log of x with the base 4, I can change this to the exp its corresponding exponential function. If you recall, log of x is equal to y with the base b, that means b to the power of y is equal to x. So let's do that. There'll be 4 to the power of y is equal to x. So if I graph 4 to the power of y is equal to x, that is the same graph of y is equal to log of x. So a lot of time it would be easier to graph an exponential function rather than a log, because here we can relate this to the numbers we can substitute to this a lot easier. If y is equal to zero, if y is equal to zero, x would be equal to four to the power of zero, which is equal to one. If y is equal to one, that would be four to the power of one, which is equal to four, and so on. So as you can see, the graph would look like a graph of 4y is equal to x would be the graph that if y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, goes through this point here. And if, if I have, as I increase the y, if, if y is equal to 1, x would be equal to 4, uh, this graph would, would increase this way. So go, go like that. Now that would be the graph of 4 to the power of y is equal to x, just by looking at these numbers here. Now that is really the graph of y is equal to log of x with the base 4. Remember we said if, on, if I want to graph log of x plus 2, then I would need to shift these two units to the left. So that, that's what exactly what we're doing. So the graph of this one here would be graph of log of x plus 2. If, if I had x minus 2, then I had to shift that, shift this graph to, to, the, to the right, if that were minus. But because this is x plus 2, then we shift it to the left. So this is really is x minus minus 2. So your shifting factor is minus 2. That's why you're shifting to the left. So that would be the correct choice. So once again, if you have to graph um, a log function, uh, it's better to change it to the exponential using this relationship here. And then once you find the basic uh, graph of the function, then you can look at the shifting factor. If the number adding here, it means shift right or left. Remember, if, I, if the number was uh, adding outside this, then it would shift it uh, or up or down. But this one, the number is adding inside the function, therefore we need to shift it to the right or left in this case. All right, here we want to graph the hyperbola. Now, remember the general equation of the hyperbola, everyone. Uh, this one, if I have Instead of x squared, I could have x minus h squared. That means the center is not 0, 0 anymore, okay? 
and then sine in between has to be minus. If this is if it's plus, it means we're looking at the ellipse. So that would be y minus k squared. The general equation of the hyperbola and ellipse is super close, just like each other, except the sign in between instead of minus is plus for the ellipse. This is still is one. And then here would be, depending on what they call it, a squared or b squared. But this would be a general equation of the hyperbola when it's not uh, at the center. Uh, but in this case, so because I don't have that h and k, so I know my center is zero, zero. So you're gonna start from zero, zero, and then if you look at the graph, you're gonna start at zero, zero, and then from here, you look at this hyperbola opens on x-axis because this x comes, uh, x comes first. You see how the x comes first? So in this case, uh, you would uh, have to move from the center three units, the square root of this number, uh, this is the square root of nine is three. You're gonna move three units to the right, one, two, one, two, three, this point right there, and three units to the left, one, two, three, right there. And then you take a square root of this number here, and then you're gonna go ahead and go a square root of 16, which is four. So from the center, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four units up, and one, two, three, four units down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a rectangle out of this. So I'm gonna, from here, I'm gonna make, create a, a rectangle like that. So just like this, I'll make a rectangle. And then once you make this rectangle, you're gonna create a diagonal of this rectangle. So you go from, this end here, you draw the diagonal. These are your asymptotes. These are the, these are the line that your graph gonna get closer and closer to that. So it's gonna be diagonal like that. And I have another diagonal right here. So let's go ahead and draw that. Okay, so you, you need to kind of imagine these are the diagonal the best you can draw here. So these are the I like a diagonal here, right there. Okay, that's close enough. So now the vertices would be on the x-axis because x comes first, you have to remember that. Okay, so you, you would uh, write, for you go from x-axis, uh, uh, so this would be kind of like two parabolas, right, across the front of each other. So uh, one uh, hyperbola would, would have this vertices here, so get closer and closer to this asymptote like that, like this. And the other one would be, right, mirror image of that like there. So this would be your hyperbola. Now if y comes first, then you would, you would have your hyperbola on the y-axis instead. So over here, you're gonna look at the one uh, that Obviously, this is not, uh, D is not a right choice, right? Because it's a circle, it's just hyperbola already. So that would be easy uh, one to eliminate. Uh, and uh, this one, uh, you wanna look for, uh, from the center, you were supposed to go square root of nine or three units right or left. So you go one, one, two, three, four, so that's not it. So they cannot be this one because you see this, this is four units, that cannot be this one. So it looks like this one, uh, three units to the right, three units to the left, and they don't show the rectangle and, and the asymptote, uh, but you can see the shape is this one. That's uh, the C, that's the one that we, we drew here. So that's how you graph your hyperbola.